pretty sure Croatia kept a little piece of my heart when I left it. Where shall I begin with this beautiful country? The delicious food and wine, the rich history, the generosity and humor of its people, the stunning coastline and beaches. Ugh. Look, let's start with where we spent most of our time in Croatia. This video is going to focus on Šibenik, where we spent two and a half months, and I'll do another video for some of the other amazing places like some of the islands, Dubrovnik, and the capital Zagreb that I also was able to visit. We hadn't done too much research on where to stay in Croatia, but we landed in Šibenik because of the Airbnb we found, so we got very lucky. Our criteria for Croatia was a smaller town by the sea, good Wi-Fi so that I can work, and a garden for Apollo our indoor outdoor cat. Those last two are typically deal breakers for us in terms of Airbnb, good Wi-Fi and a little garden for Apollo. It turns out that Šibenik is a little slice of paradise, I kid you not, and we feel so lucky to have had the opportunity to live there for a few months. If you're looking for a home base to visit the Dalmatian coast, I would definitely recommend Šibenik. Our Airbnb was fantastic, our host and his family were so wonderful and generous, and their outdoor cat Tiggy is such a sweetie who got along really really well with Apollo. Šibenik is home to two UNESCO heritage sites, the St. Nicholas Fortress and St. Jacob's Cathedral, but it also has a Michelin star restaurant, easy access to the Kornati Islands and other islands off the Dalmatian coast, a really, really beautiful and well-maintained historic center, Kirka National Park, and there's also four fortresses in Šibenik. It's kind of surrounded and the vistas are beautiful. But one of my favorite ways to spend time in Šibenik or pretty much anywhere I'm visiting is to just find a cafe. I really liked Jiro and Nomalo and just people watch. I learned that coffee culture is really big in Croatia and you know like 10 30 11 a.m is a really good time to take a break from work if you can and just check out what all the fashionable people are wearing and try to learn Croatian by osmosis. I failed really really hard at this. My Croatian is horrible but since Croatians are incredibly kind and really chill this didn't seem to bother anyone too much. With my knee injury the first month was pretty limited to just exploring local restaurants and the historic center and doing a lot of swimming at the local beach because that was the only physical activity I could do. I couldn't run. I also spent a lot of time choosing and planning my outfits because what a great way to recover your knee. And also because Croatians always get dressed well. Like there's no occasion necessary. And I mean, not just putting yourself together. I definitely noticed, especially now that I'm in Italy, Croatian women in particular are meticulously made up. Like the hair is always really coiffed. The clothes are very trend forward. And it's, it's really cool to just sort of experience this. And it really made me step up my outfit game. So I discovered some really good secondhand shopping too, which I've already done a video on, a beautiful vintage shop. I will leave it up here for you in the cards. After a little while, I connected with the Shibenek tourist board and they sent me on a wonderful walking tour with an expert guide, which I would highly recommend. I think getting a guide is one of the best ways to really understand the city. And there are so many different topics that you can choose from, whether it's like food and wine or, you know, more traditional historic tours. I'm going to put a link for the tourist board in the description box below because it is so well curated and full of good information. This city has such an incredible history and the tourist board has done an incredible job maintaining the authenticity of the historic center. Our guide Tina knows the city so well. She took us inside St. Jacob's Cathedral which took approximately a hundred years to build by the way and is most known for the singular architectural method of its dome. You will be so pleasantly surprised by Šibenik. The tourist board has done such a phenomenal job keeping it chill and not so commercialized. It didn't matter so much that I couldn't do too many adventurous things because so much happens in Šibenik during the summer. There are some really great events like the International Children's Festival. This was wild. So many people out and about. There was the Spring Festival that we got to attend which was really beautiful. We ate really well in Šibenik. Not only are the restaurants fantastic, my favorite being wine and coffee at Nomalo, dinner at Pepperoncino, and cocktails at the San Antonio rooftop bar. But the local market always had really good fresh and homemade produce. The offerings in Šibenik are pretty traditional to the region, so you will find a lot of grilled fish, really good seafood, and some solid Italian influence with local pastas and risottos, but always with a really nice local Dalmatian twist. The wine though, 
Okay, I do not claim to know anything about wine, nor do I have like a super refined palate, but what I do know is that all of the wine that I had while I was in Croatia was amazing. Super smooth, really well balanced, it just went beautifully with everything or on its own. What I found out is that the Dalmatian coast is actually home to some of the best wines in Croatia, and I had the opportunity to visit a local winery only a few minutes away from Šibenik. So if you do stay in Šibenik or nearby, oh my gosh, go visit this place. A huge thanks again to my pals at the tourism board who set this up. The winery I visited is called Baraka. It is a family-owned boutique winery that produces in small batches, and it's stunning, warm, and completely unpretentious. It's like my kind of winery. <laughs> if you like the idea of slow and intentional living, this winery is a really great place to visit. The owner, Philip Baraka, who I had the chance to chat and do a tour with, told us that rather than develop wines based on market demand and trends, he uses environmental conditions that the grape grew from first. So kind of ignoring what the market wants and creating something beautiful in tandem with nature instead. I mean, this sounds a lot like the definition of slow fashion, but translated for the wine industry, and I am so here for it. I'll leave all of the details for the Baraka winery in the description box below too. So if you can't get there though, do look for Baraka on the menu when you're in the Dalmatian area or in Croatia. I am lucky to live in a country like Canada where the natural beauty is absolutely stunning and abundant and I'm very lucky to be familiar already with the gorgeous Adriatic coast but nothing really prepares you for the natural beauty you can find in Croatia. Our guide Tina also took us on a tour of Kirka National Park, a very limited one because of my knee but the experience was so serene and it's so well preserved. The Croatian government really takes a preserve its natural phenomena and beauty very seriously. This park is home to so many different species of plants and wildlife. The park is huge. You could literally spend days there exploring the natural beauty. But what I love about it are the cultural installations, the archaeological sites, medieval fortresses. Like I can only imagine how incredible of an experience is if you can spend a full day or a few days there, which I would love to do if I can get back to Croatia at some point. We had the opportunity to see and visit the Skradinsky Book Waterfalls, which is the longest travertine barrier in Europe. Travertine is the mineral and rock you see a lot of at Kirka. It's built up over time, so the park itself really feels alive and always changing. I'll leave the information for Kirka National Park down below as well. Šibenik is also a fantastic jumping off point to visit some gorgeous islands and nearby cities like Split, Primošten, Zadar, Trogir. I could go on. I took a day trip to Zlarin as well as Pridovic, but I'm going to focus on Zlarin today. This is Croatia's very first single-use plastic-free island. Plastic still does exist on the island, but the initiative is centered around ensuring festivals and events don't create waste via single-use plastics. There are are so many festivals and events on Zlaren. It's pretty amazing for such a small island. The amount of things that you can find and do here, as well as hiking and biking and kayaking and other sort of like nature leisure activities, there's definitely no shortage of cultural events and content. So I would definitely recommend visiting Zlaren if you can. There are no cars on the island and due to recent reforestation, it's more biodiverse than ever. So you'll also find a rich history around coral and handcrafted coral jewelry and actually it's home to the longest port in Croatia completed at the beginning of the 20th century. We also visited some land destinations like Zadar with its coastal sea organ, Primošten with its really charming historic center and bananas beaches like oh my gosh get to Primošten it was beautiful. Trogir we visited also and Split which was really active I enjoyed Split, but a few day trips there were all I really needed to confirm that I preferred to come back to the tranquility and rich character of Šibenik at the end of the day. The beauty is, again, all of these other destinations are within like maybe 45 minutes of a drive to Šibenik. Getting around Croatia was fairly easy and the driving is not wild. It's pretty easy to get around. And finally, the people. Everyone we met was so kind and chill and welcoming. 
everything from the vet who looked after Apollo to Masha, the incredible vintage store owner, and even my physiotherapist who took really good care of my knee. Croatians are so warm and kind-hearted and I would definitely recommend a visit. I even met some of you, which reminds me, if you see me while I am visiting your country or your city, please come say hi. Don't be shy. It's my greatest pleasure and honor to spend some time with you in your homes on the weekend through your screens. So it just brings me so much joy when I get to meet you in person. All right, that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed my little trip to Croatia. I've got all of the information that I mentioned for you in the description box if you do plan on visiting Croatia. And if you have any questions, just get into my DMs and ask away. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll be back with a slow fashion video. Ciao!